trip, trip, trip. Trip, trip, come here, what's this? There's big dogs. Ow. There's small dogs. Greedy dogs. No, stop it. And speedy dogs. Don't go, don't go, come here. Dogs you can't touch. Norman puts a stop to everything. And dogs that love too much. We can't do this every morning, can we? But no matter what the size or the problem... I know that I've done this to him. Graham Hall can fix them all. <laughs> I'll take on any dog, any size. Scooper, yeah, that's what we want, come on. Any problem? Over lockdown, the nation's been welcoming an unprecedented number of puppies into our homes. She's our puppy! Adorable fluffy balls of joy, eager to explore the world and get into a little trouble. <laughs> but with so many new puppies out there, master dog trainer Graham Hall knows this is no time to rest on his laurels. Ah, no. In the last year, we've gone a bit potty for puppies, I think. But that's fine, but it does come with responsibility. And it's lovely having a little furry friend around. But our job is to teach them how the world works, how to behave, you yeah? know? And when that bit of early learning's gone missing, that's when I get called in. This week, Graham's casebook is dedicated to canine kiddies, as he shares his top tips on solving puppy problems. There's little Lucy the Sprocker. Lucy, come here. Who refuses to do what she's told. I don't know why Lucy won't listen to me. A baby border collie who's so unsocialised, it's putting her in danger. This, frankly, is an accident waiting to happen. That's enough now. And a tearaway toddler whose lack of biting boundaries... Oh, look, I'm bleeding now. ..could see him pay the ultimate price. <laughs> Can't allow for that to continue. <laughs> Come on. Graham's first cornerstone of puppy training is socialisation. You see, socialisation is all about taking your dog out and getting them used to what could be a big scary world potentially. Getting them used to everything so that actually they're not scared. So, hello, go on then. <laughs> there. That's it. It's just about creating lots of positive experiences with everything. Not just dogs, but people and things. The washing machine, the ironing board, you name it, everything. Do all of those things and you'll end up with a puppy who's happy and well-adjusted. But if you don't do it, you can have the opposite. Which is exactly the problem in the quiet seaside town of Colwyn Bay in North Wales. <laughs> where nine-month-old Collie River is intent on breaking the peace. She barks at cars. <laughs> she barks at people on the bike. <laughs> she barks at kids. <laughs> she barks at, barks at everybody. At home, however, care practitioner Sally, chocolate salesman Ryan and their son Adam have the perfect puppy. We got River because we're getting married in the future, so we wanted to have a family dog who we could go out walking with, we could lose weight, we could just all enjoy our family time. She's really loving, she's cuddly, she's fun, she's playful. Get out of the house and it's a different ball game altogether. Does anyone come in? Oh, wait a minute, wait. Keeping River away from the public is a military operation. Wait. OK. Wait. No, carry on. This is outside our house. We can't even leave our house. Okay. Even though, like, you're trying to reassure her, she doesn't care who you are if you're on your way. The joy of their new arrival has been replaced by a very different emotion. I'm worried about seeing people I know. It's embarrassing, for one. Oh, you've got a new puppy. Let's meet her. And then I've got to pull her back. And River's antisocial behaviour doesn't stop on the street. Sorry. People can't come round to the house because she's aggressive. I was going to come in, but by not. <laughs> yeah, she's not very good with people in the house. 
so yeah. I'll come back again, yeah? yeah. We can, right, we can right. meet up for a coffee and spin. Yeah, all right, all thank right. you. The family's plan for their puppy to make them fitter has dramatically backfired. Get your ball. We spend more time in the house with her than what we were doing before we had her. The weight loss is not going very well at all. <laughs> and as Sally and Ryan are getting fatter, River is getting nastier. River did turn on someone. <laughs> Sorry. He did draw a little bit of blood. If we had to get River put down, the effect on the kids would be massive. I just can't even imagine it. It's not unusual for a puppy to, to sort of get spooked by something new, but how we train them to deal with new experiences is the key thing. <laughs> You're not happy, are you? Well, I'd better come in, eh? Come in, yes. Thank you. <laughs> River, come on, darling. OK, ready? So, I've seen your problem at the door. When we first got her, everything was perfect. Until one day, when we went out for a walk, there was a bigger dog who barked at her. Uh -huh. um, and then from that moment on, she's just been uncontrollable outside. And in the house, do you have any visitors around? No. <laughs> we don't yeah, have visitors. No, we don't have people around. Right. It's not worth it. Yeah. So she's a bit neurotic, really, isn't she? Yeah. So I see she's wearing a, a, a muzzle. Why is that? When we were out on a walk, she did turn on someone. Oh. She bit him? Yeah, she grabbed the back of his leg. Uh-huh. So we've got a pattern here of things are getting worse? Oh, getting a lot worse. Well, I'd really like to see it, so shall we get togged up and get out? Yeah, OK. Yeah. OK. Come on, come here. <laughs> Straight away, she doesn't want to go for a walk, does she? No. Any other dog would be dragging running you out the of the door. door, but she didn't want to get up. <laughs> There's a man and a dog in the distance. Sorry. River. River. River, stop. Yeah. River, stop. Stop. I've seen loads and loads of reactive dogs, probably thousands now. But it's rare to have a reaction as badly as this in a puppy. I think this is the most the most reactive puppy I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, there's a dog in a queue of people. What would you normally do? Cross. Cross the road. <laughs> Go on, let's cross the road. Yeah. See what you, do. you must spend your life just crossing the road to avoid I things. hide from people all the time. Yeah. No sooner have they crossed... There's another dog coming now. ..they need to cross again. But suddenly... <laughs> oh. If Sally had lost the balance, she'd have been head first under the wheels of that bus. This, frankly, is an accident waiting to happen, and it only takes once. Oh, there's a dog walking past now. Well, we, we haven't got time yeah, to cross. We haven't got time. So, I'll what do you normally the... do here? Right. right. If I pull in the corner... Yeah. <laughs> Ryan and Sally seem stressed. I mean, every time they see something, they're having to cross the road, and I understand why, but, I mean, it's crazy. You cross the road, there's another dog. There's a couple coming with a little dachshund. I've got a pretty thick skin, but even I was embarrassed. As River throws the ultimate puppy tantrum, even Graham's had enough. Well, this is no fun for anybody, is it? You, no. her, anybody walking past? It's awful. It's really awful. I don't know what to do. So what's going to happen if I can't fix this? She's going to have to go somewhere that they can handle her. I think Ryan and Sally have got to the end of the road with her, really. But I'm afraid that that might not be as bad as it gets, because, you know, if she does manage to bite somebody another time, that could be curtains for her. Coming up, more little puppies with big problems. That's enough. A 16-week-old Staffy... Look, I'm bleeding now. ..whose mouthy ways mean he could be rehomed. It would be the most difficult decision like, ever. A dog groomer who can't control her own pup. Does make me feel a little bit useless. And can Graham turn the tide on River's terror tantrums? <laughs> this week, Graham's tackling puppy problems and sharing his three cornerstones of early training. Sit. So that your little one doesn't grow up to be a big problem. Graham's with River, a nine-month-old terrified of everyone and everything. I think this is the most reactive puppy I've ever seen. For puppies to become well-adjusted dogs, 
they need to be socialized within their first three months to a broad range of positive experiences. But River's socialization went wrong. One day when we went out for a walk, there was a bigger dog who barked at her. <laughs> Graham thinks it was this moment where Sally and Ryan slipped up. I think what's happened is that one day when it went wrong, you kind of reacted in the wrong way. Yeah. I think the bottom line is she's just super anxious. Yeah, I agree. She is. She makes me anxious. So we're just an anxious mess. So with your kids, if they were sort of anxious about something, you know, yeah. trip to the dentist or something, yeah. whatever it is, right? I would, I'd be confident because I need to show them it's going to be all right. But with your dog, you're falling apart, really, aren't you? Yeah. So I think that the way you're reacting is making it worse. So Graham is going back to basics on how to socialise a puppy with confidence. You can only socialise when you're getting to meet people. And I want to start here in this room. OK. Yeah? The problem you've got is that River feeds off the energy of other people, so you need to brief your guests to stay calm. And you need to take calm yourself. Okay. Right, OK. To help with the indoor training, Sally's cousin Laura has volunteered. Are you all right? I think River's one of the most kind of reactive puppies I've ever seen, so training her is... It's, it's going to be hard. Oh, here we are. First, Graham wants to introduce Laura in the front room. Right, so if she barks, remember... No. Sally's job is to take charge, no. stepping between River no. and Laura. Good. And a confident... No. ..tells River she's not a threat. And then what? Good girl. Well done. Don't rev her up. <laughs> By leading with confidence, Sally has shown River that she doesn't need to be scared. Right, we need to do this a few times. Good girl. <laughs> oh, here we go. By repeating the training... No. Graham's banking River will soon stop reacting. Great. A little tip about you know. You're the mother of boys, right? Yeah. What do you say to them when they've really got it wrong? I probably shouldn't say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> What's the tone of voice? No. Better. Okay. As Sally's nervous voice feeds River's fears... No. A firmer command... Go, girl. ..nails it. <laughs> no. But whilst River's protests have all but gone, Laura still isn't getting the warmest of welcomes. Straight in. Now, at this stage, I've got to be honest, it doesn't look like she's your best friend. I wonder what happens if you try and call her across. Will she come across? Do you want to give it a go? Go, cool. So... Come here. Come on, then. She's not sure, is she? To socialise a puppy, they must have positive experiences. But can River overcome her fears? Sally, if you very gently, with the collar, just lead her onto the floor... Yeah. There you go. You now if you call her... Come on. Come on. Come there! Yay. There you go. Can you give her a little cuddle, if you like? With some gentle encouragement, River is happily socialising. That's great, isn't it? She's really happy. Yeah. It's amazing seeing her like that. And she's just so relaxed, so happy. She's like a different dog. We, we've gone from a scared dog who thought people were a threat to a calm dog who's happily getting fussed from one. By having experiences like this, come in, come in. puppies learn not to be afraid of strangers coming into the house, and in time, so should River. But right now, Graham thinks she's a threat to no one. Let's play with your new friend, Laura. There you go. <laughs> Throw it for her, she'll bring it back to you. That's it. Ah, uh, not me. Come. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. Cuddling cousin Laura is one thing, but getting a terrified River under control outside is going to be Graham's greatest challenge. Outside is different. Anything can happen and anything can come at her all the time. That's going to be more difficult. But before he tackles that, his next tip is all about teething. Hey, clever girl. So, you see, lots of people have problems with puppies nipping and biting when they shouldn't, and, and it's normal. I mean, puppies just investigate the world with their mouths, mainly because their paws aren't very handy. But they need to understand boundaries, you know, what they can bite and what they can't. So that, for example, yeah, there you go. Play with that if you want. <laughs> the thing is, if they don't understand the boundaries, 
that's when it leads to a whole world of pain for you in the future. Someone who knows all about pain... Stop! ..is Kelly. No! Ow! No! ..as she can't stop 16-week-old Reggie taking lumps out of her. Look, I'm bleeding now. Naughty boy. This is a daily event. I'm covered in blood. It's really horrible being bitten every day. Kelly and husband Nick, who live in Portishead, Bristol, both work in the aerospace industry and are having extreme teething problems with Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Reggie. That looks really deep. It is deep. I just don't know what to do to stop him. These are obviously all your, uh, your scars, scars from your previous, from previous battles. Ones. Feels like he's escalating, doesn't it? Like many families recently, Kelly and Nick decided to make the best of a bad situation. With lockdown and COVID, we decided that now was probably the right time for us so that we can invest time in him, train him to how we want him to be before going back to work. After 13 years together, Reggie was a well-planned puppy. We decided from, from the get-go, really, that we weren't going to have kids. Mm. And Reggie, he was going to complete our family, really, mm. wasn't he? I think it would have been much easier to have had a child. <laughs> Doing the cleaning would be easier. Ow! Ow! Stop! I can't get anything done around the house. Reggie! No! If I try and do anything, he just bites me. Uh, no! That's enough! I feel stressed all the time. This is not what I expected when we thought we were going to be getting the puppy of our dreams. Try and... Uh, uh, <coughs> hey! No! That's another bite. <coughs> He's got really sharp teeth because he's a puppy. Stop that. Uh, don't you go for me. I'm just at the end of my tether with him. Ow! As the clock ticks down to their return to the office, there's another problem on the horizon. So the plan is for Reggie to go and stay with my mum. Down, don't you fight. No. I feel like Reggie's got worse and I'm not really looking forward to having him. I just don't know how we're going to well, cope, how you're going to cope with him. I cannot believe it. Yeah, you've got another... Yeah, I know. I really don't know what I'm going to do. Sit, good boy. And it's not just Kelly's anxiety that's growing bigger by the day. He's been putting on over a kilogram a week, so he's going to be a really big, strong, powerful dog. He's not getting any better. No, I know. I know you've said to me that he's got to go, but I don't want to give up on him. He's tearing you apart. It would be the most difficult decision like, ever. Uh, uh. Hey! Stop. I'm going to be totally, absolutely devastated. I can't even think about it, to be honest. But I can't allow that to... <laughs> I can't allow for that to continue. <laughs> because it's just not fair on us and also other people. No, and it'll kind of feel like um, that we failed. Mm. <sighs> Reggie's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and you know they get a bad press. They're lovely dogs, great with people, but Staffy puppies can be really boisterous. They're a real handful. Hello, hi, 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 hi nice hi, to meet. Hi. Hello, Reggie. Reggie come on. Thank you. So, by all accounts, you've got a biting puppy. We, we do have a biting yeah. puppy, yeah. Puppies should be a bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, which is what we were told. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But to be honest with you, it's not been that much fun. I could do with seeing it, really. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Reggie, no. No. Straight Ow. away. Ow! Ouch. No. <laughs> Straight away, Reggie's <coughs> gone to bite her <coughs> wrist. Stop. <coughs> Stop. No. Ow! Stop that. No. No. God, he's non-stop. No. No. Puppy mouthy problems go, this is as bad as it gets, really. No. So every time he grabs Kelly, Stop. Kelly's pulling away, understandably. Stop. Reggie, Stop. 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 When Nick tells him, no. he pretty much listens. Get down. But it's a really different story with Kelly. Oh, no! That really hurt. Mm, it's like a He's... proper pinch, isn't it? Yeah. It's come right up. Shall we pop him away and we'll have a chat? It's a good thing. So you got a puppy in the middle of lockdown. What was the thinking? Our situation with working from home 
now felt the right time for, for us to get a puppy. And what, what impact is that going to have in terms of work? At the moment, I'm still working from home. You're back at work. If Reggie's behaviour continues and my mum can't have him, yeah. then I don't know how I'm going to be able to return to work. Right. Wow. Is it getting worse? I feel that it's getting worse with Reggie. It's the thought of him, like, what he can do, really, I think, is the scary thing. Yeah. And the scary thing is, is he, he doesn't even know what he's capable no. of. Yeah, no, you absolutely. both said the word scary, then. Are you scared of your own dog? I definitely feel intimidated by him, and I think he picks up on that from mm. me. This is a serious problem. If he carries on like this, it's not going to end happily for anybody here. The worst that can happen is that one day he gets taken away from them and, and put down. Still to come, a sprocker puppy who won't listen. Is he? Yeah. Can Graham clamp down on Reggie's biting? It looks like a bit of a bun fight, no. really. No. No. And will River no. ever be happy in the outside world? Let's go back a bit. It's OK. We've pushed it too far. This week, master dog trainer Graham Hall is tackling the nation's puppy problems. Ow. Look, I'm bleeding now. Today, he's in Portishead in Bristol with 16-week-old pup Reggie, who's using his owner as a chew toy. Puppy mouthing problems go, this is as bad as it gets, really. As Kelly is the focus of Reggie's fangs and not husband Nick, Graham believes he knows the root cause. He's playing a game, but it's a game that's honing his hunting skills. So the, the game is grab hold of the prey animal and see what happens. And Kelly, you're doing a great impression of a prey animal. So you're squealing like an animal in distress and you're moving that hand around. And it just becomes the greatest game in the world for him. That totally makes sense. I always sort of move away and sort of like move my hands about to try and get him away from me. You know, with a really little puppy, the theory is if you go, ah, no, like that. Mm. They go, oh, that didn't work. Game over. Mm. No, you haven't got that dog. You've mm. got the dog who goes, yeah, <laughs> bring it on, you know? Yeah. Of course, he plays it more with you because you're more animated and you've got a high pitched voice, so it's just the way it is. The good news is, I've seen where you're going wrong, which means we can put it right. Oh, that's, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's just what we need. It made me feel quite bad to hear that I was actually making matters worse with Reggie. That's enough. As Kelly's voice and hand movements are exacerbating Reggie's natural biting impulse, Graham has a simple technique to show him exactly where the boundaries are. No! Ow! What we're going to do is, every time he goes for the hand, not move the hand away, you've got another hand. So with that, you can move him off to the side. So firm but gentle, you're telling him no. The thing to remember is that Reggie thinks it's a big game and we're going to teach him otherwise. For this to work, Kelly must resist snatching her hand away and be firm with her disapproval. No. 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 Voice. No. No. It looks like a bit of a bun fight, no. really. Kelly's struggling to stop Reggie, so Graham steps in. Ah! No. Good boy. Good boy. We see the difference, I'm very clear, that's all. You just need to be a bit more like that. No, followed by... Good boy. No. Better. You're moving your hand, though. No. No. The other hand, remember. OK. So you're keeping one hand fixed. No. That's it. Reggie's learning that Kelly's hand no. is off the menu, but no. this little pup's got new dinner plans. No. See what he's doing? So he's going, hand's not no. working, so that's okay. good. Yeah. Feet. No. So he's a clever no. dog. Kelly needs to just stick to her guns and no. you won't, right? No. Good boy. Nice, nice. Good boy. Look, he's got fed up and walked off. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All you did was change the voice, yeah. right? We can carry on doing your gardening, no? Yeah. <laughs> but this little nipper's not quite given up. Uh, no. 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 This time, Kelly's still hand and firm no. No gets the message to sink in. Good boy. Good. What well, you got there? That's amazing how quick as well. Yeah. It's like he's, he's bored of biting me now. Yeah, you're not worth biting anymore. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs>
Just a few hours ago, Kelly had no respite from Reggie's bite, but Graham's simple technique has worked a treat. Have you come out of that unscathed? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. There you go. So what, what effect is this going to have on you? This is going to massively change my life because I know how to control yeah. Reggie now and I can pass that information on to my mum. I feel really optimistic about Reggie's future now. Great. And as we would say in Bristol, I think we're certainly going to have a Gert Lush dog. Gert Lush? Gert Lush, which is essentially a very nice dog on our hands. So. I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. With Reggie's boundaries set, Graham's next cornerstone of puppy training is how to teach a command. Sit. Down. <laughs> you see, the thing about commands is you can teach them as soon as you like, and it's just our way of communicating with them. But it's got to be three things, three Cs. Clear, concise, and consistent. Because if I say sit one minute, she gets that. Then I say down, yeah, fine. But if I say sit down, she's like, make your mind up, which is it? We don't think of that. So clear, concise, consistent. In Redditch, Worcestershire, 13 week old Sprocker Lucy is finding the concept of commands a challenge. Lucy! As dog groomer Faye can't get her to listen to a word she says. It's a bit embarrassing. I mean, I'm very good at controlling everybody else's dogs, but for some reason I can't seem to crack mine. And when I'm working in the salon, it's just stressful because she's on everything. And my main focus when I'm in the salon has got to be the client's dog. Lucy? Lucy, come here. I don't know why Lucy won't listen to me. It does make me feel a little bit useless. Oh, Lucy, you've weed in the salon. Lucy, you know. Faye lives with her mum, Anne, and dad, Steve, and 12-year-old Charlie, but none of them are keen on puppy-sitting Lucy. I call Lucy Lucifer, the devil dog. And the more you say no, she just seems to turn around and say, right, I will keep going. And she doesn't give you a moment's peace all through the day. If Lucy is quiet, it's usually because she's up to no good. She causes a lot of destruction to my parents' house. Come the end of the day, it's just like a bomb's gone off in it. Oh, that's the charging yeah, phone charger. None of the other dogs we've had no. have ever done that. No. Oh, no. It does cause tension because I tend to shout at Faye because it's effectively Faye's dog. Bringing a new puppy home is usually a joyful occasion. But Lucy's arrival was in the wake of a tragedy. I got Lucy um, because I lost my other dog, Blue, quite suddenly at the age of 14. I've lost a part of me that I'm not getting back. He was my absolute world, that dog. And you shouldn't have your favourites when it comes to dogs. They're all different, but there was something about him that will just never be replaced. It sounds so bad, but I absolutely love Lucy, but I'd do anything for it to be blue. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit upsetting, really. She's here and the other dog isn't. So getting a puppy is a big responsibility. A bit like having a baby. It, it, it's an awful lot of work particularly in the early stages, and I think people often don't appreciate that. Hi, Graham, coming in. Hiya, thank you. Oh, hello. She's a live wire, isn't she? So you're working on a dog there. Mm -hmm. She's going bananas all around your feet. How does that work? <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> that's, that's the issue. You know, you're doing your best to keep an eye on her, but you've got a job oh, to do you? here. Yeah, yeah, because I can't leave a dog on the tables. Yeah. Lucy, stop. Off. We'll go and find herself another one. Till all of them are out of reach. Lucy! Yeah. Wait. She's looking for trouble there, isn't she? Yeah. Luce? Lucy? I think perhaps Faye thinks she's giving commands, but she's not really. There's an awful lot of calling Lucy's name. Lucy! Luce? But with dog training, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Wait. It's all great game. Lucy! She knows I can't leave her. So 15 weeks old and she's worked out who's the boss around here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Lucy's a really normal puppy. She's doing all the things that they do. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance, I get that. But for Faye, it's a much bigger deal and she's putting really high expectations on this puppy. Lucy! For me, the question is, why? With Faye's mum at work, 
Graham's keen to find out more from Dad Steve. So this is Charlie, and he's how old? He's coming up to 12. So he's an old boy. He's getting on a bit now. Yeah. So, Fred, tell me how you came to get Lucy. So I got Lucy about three weeks after I lost my previous dog, Blue. Uh-huh. Not only have I turned my world upside down by losing Blue, but then I turned it upside down again by, <laughs> by bringing a puppy into the house. You're not over him, are you? No. <laughs> It was quite special. Yeah, he was. He really was special. Mm. Excuse me. No, no, I understand. Dogs get you like that. They do. But it's yeah. not fair on her now either because she's almost fighting with a ghost, I suppose you could say. When you get a puppy, there's lots of considerations and everybody thinks about money because it does take a lot of money. Practical things like, you know, where's the puppy going to sleep? But what we don't talk about is that you need to be in the right place emotionally as well. I think it's pretty obvious that Faye's just not over blue, you know, and all that sadness, and that's understandable. But she's really looking at Lucy and expecting Lucy to be blue. The reason Lucy's not listening is that Faye's not treating her like a little puppy. To help Faye connect with Lucy, Graham wants to teach her how to communicate with a puppy using simple, clear commands. The way to get the message across is pretty simple. So when she goes for something that we don't want her to have, leave it and reward her when she gets it right. Mm -hmm. I've brought a little Prezi for her. It's... Cute. <laughs> oh, you'd love to play with that. Graham wants to teach Lucy that she can play with this toy, but her favourite chew thing... Leave it. ..is not allowed. Leave it. And timing is key. Yes, there you go, then. So I've separated the two. Uh -huh. No, don't do that. Pause. Yes, good girl, you can have this yeah. instead. Yeah? The thing about puppies is they're pre-programmed to learn stuff. Leave it. But they never learn anything unless your signals are nice and clear. I tell you what, let's up the ante a bit. So. To make sure this pup's listening, Graham wants to test her around a much bigger distraction. Can Lucy resist? So she's walking straight past us now. Yeah. She's like, no, no, that's not for me. I think that's out of bounds, right? Mm. So let's put another one on. Leave a bit dangly. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? But if I get this out... What's this? There you go. Yes, clever girl. Good girl. So that's the message. But will Faye deliver that message yeah. as well? Leave it. Leave it. Well done. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. What's this? What's that? That's it. Now let her have it. Good girl. Just leave it. Well done. Now, the important thing about this training is really teaching Faye how to communicate, because the better you communicate, yeah. the better you understand each good other. Good girl. What's this? What's that? There you go. Good girl. Look, she's walking over the paper <laughs> what you to got? play. Thank you. Let's try again. Take the toy away for the time being. Leave it. Well done, toy. Good girl. Good girl. That's really nice, because you're being really clear now. So, how do you feel about that? Yeah, really good. I kind of know what I've got to do. I think it's a mindset thing. I think you've got yourself stuck in a rut. So it's kind of like I've come along and almost given you permission yeah. to start again. Yeah. Once, Lucy wouldn't listen to a word her mum said. Lucy. But with a clear and simple command... Leave it. Well done. Faye has her full attention. <laughs> Today has been amazing. I didn't think she'd start responding in such a short amount of time. Graham has worked magic, both on human and on dog. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been brilliant. I suppose I've shown Faye how to take those first early steps in connecting with a puppy. With that is going to come that building of a relationship. Lucy's going to be a big part of this family for a long time to come. No. Still to come, Graham's biggest puppy problem ever. No. Can River face the outside world no. without a torrential tantrum? OK, we've pushed it too far. This week, Graham's been giving out his top tips for training puppies. Today, he's back in Colwyn Bay, tackling socialisation with one of his most challenging cases ever. 
an antisocial pup terrified of everything. This is really extreme behaviour. For a nine-month-old puppy, I've, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's not lost on me that the outside world is the biggest deal here. It's the whole reason Ryan and Sally got River, to get out walking, <laughs> to lose a bit of weight for their wedding. Last time, Graham began socialisation yeah. training indoors. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? She's really happy. But today, he wants to take it to the next level. Come on in. Well, she's like a different dog to the last one I walked into. Yeah. yeah. A lot quieter, a lot more relaxed. Super. Well, we've nailed the inside then, I think. Yeah. But today, big day. Yeah. <laughs> the outside world. Yeah. And it's not easy, I think, because inside we can control the environment. So I'm pretty nervous about the training because, obviously, of how bad she is. Yeah. The trick to that's going to be making sure you don't look nervous. Yeah. Socialising a puppy to a wide range of positive experiences in early life helps them to become well-adjusted, confident dogs. But a bad experience with an unfriendly dog means that River's socialisation has gone extremely wrong. Come on. Making her scared of everything. The thing is that Sally and Ryan are acting as though they're scared as well. So the way they carry themselves, the way they've got the lead, everything about that says, we're anxious, we're scared. It's no surprise, really, that if they're going to act scared, River's going to be scared. We're never going to convince her this is OK, really, if you look terrified. Mm -hmm. I need a little bit of that. Oi, I'm in charge here, you know? It's reassuring to her. It's like, oh, I'm with somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Great. Let, let me have a little go walking up and down. Let's see what we've got. So, there you go. Good girl, that's better. And. Again, with an air of, like, I know what I'm doing, it's fine, come on. Graham's confident air appears to instantly reassure River. Is he for real? <laughs> <laughs> She's not pulling at all. And even when an unfamiliar dog appears... No. Graham shows River he's in charge and there's no reason to be afraid. Good girl. Good, that's better. Right. That's what I'm after, yeah? There we go. She wasn't dragging you all over the show like she was with us. Instead of just holding on for dear life and strangling her, I'm just putting a little flick in through the collar and release again, yeah? Yeah. Flick and release, yeah? What you're doing is holding on for dear life, she pulls against it, you pull, and then it just becomes this terrible tug of war. Graham's arranged for an unthreatening dog to help with the training. We're going to introduce the other dog at a distance. OK. Off you go, then. That's it. To socialise River with another dog, Ryan needs to show her there's nothing to fear as they slowly approach. Give her a bit of slack, look. You've, your arm's dead tense again. That's it. There you are, that's better. <laughs> now, this is where the challenge... As Ryan is still tightening his grip on the lead... Just relax your arm. That's it. River is sensing his anxiety and reacting. No. No. Keep going around, don't stop walking. That's it. But by flicking and releasing the lead... Good. Well done. That's a lot better now, isn't it? Yeah. River's usual lunging and barking quickly disappears. There's not a lot of reaction at all, is there? No, there was initially, and then you've got control of it nicely. We're going to move a bit closer this time. Graham's so... technique is working. Good girl, that's better. And as they get closer and closer, there's a marked improvement. Looking good, Ray. She's so close to this dog now and not reacting at all. I hope you haven't ordered your wedding suit yet. Do I look any thinner? No. Yeah, by the minute. <laughs> Great. Well, if you want to just hold off there. So, very good. She seemed a lot happier, a lot more comfortable. Yeah, because this wouldn't have happened. She'd be barking her head off right now, wouldn't she? It's a great start, but Graham knows River needs a broad range of new experiences, and she's especially reactive to moving objects. Sally, your turn. Okay. Um, same thing as you saw Ryan doing, circling around, keep her moving all the time, looking as though I've got this. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. No. So she's seen the cyclist then. Don't just hold on for dear life. So that's when it goes wrong. You're holding on, yeah. right, instead of no and release. I can't. No. 
the constant tension and standing still is making River anxious. No. But by releasing the lead... And then... Good girl. When it starts to go wrong, you panic. The, the trick, Sally, is you keep your arm relaxed even though your hand's tight, yeah? Now that's better. There, look Good at that now. Good girl. Let's get a bit nearer. That's it. Head up. Good girl. No. But when River reacts and lunges again... No. 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 Sally can do nothing to calm no. her. No. No. Let's go back a bit. It's OK. We've pushed it too far. Start here and get a bit nearer, a bit nearer, that's all. So, you all right? Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's not your fault. We just need to do it in bits. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, we're getting there. It just means so much to help her. Do you know what yeah, I mean? it's okay. Well, you are helping her. You're doing all right, you know. I don't know. I just feel like I can't do it. You know, this is pretty extreme behaviour, and it takes time. Yeah. You know, it's taken nine months to get this bad. But sometimes you got to pick yourself up, dust yourself down, try again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Give it another go. Yes. Good. Come on, girl. That's it. Drop your arm. Girl. <laughs> no. No, this way. No. No. Good girl. Super. That's really good. Good girl. Good girl. Now she's listening to you, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Yeah, that's magic. <laughs> good girl. Super. By overcoming her fears, Sally is, for the first time, walking a calm and responsive dog. Well, well done. You stood up, dusted yourself off and <laughs> carried on. So, the truth is, we've had our ups and downs today, I think it's fair to yeah. say. I've got the confidence now to take her out yeah. and see these, like, problems that she's facing and deal with them together. Good. Shall we uh, head on back to yours? Yeah. Yes. Come on in. Sally and Ryan need to continue training, but Graham has shown anything is possible. Stop for a sec. You just walked past the bike. Yeah. No reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I think this training is going to change the lives of Ryan and Sally because it means they can now get out with this dog. They can get the exercise they want and River will be a happier dog. We know we need to socialise River now, so we're going to be slowly introducing her to different things. I'm more confident that I'm going to be able to take her out every day now. So I do think it'll be a happy ending. Yeah. In Worcestershire, Lucy has settled into family life and she's learning the house rules. In Colwyn Bay, it's still early days for River, but she's making progress. Hi, Graham. River's doing uh, really well with the socialisation training. She's a lot happier with people coming to the house now. Outside, we've been making great progress with the training. Thanks for all your help. And in Portishead, Reggie has stopped biting completely. As you can see, he's turning into a big, strong, handsome boy, um, and we now feel that he's ready for doggy daycare with his nanny. If you think your badly behaved dog could do with Graham's help, then why not get in touch? Details can be found at www.channel5.com forward slash get involved.